And he just gets engulfed. Oh, <laughs> Look at Van Dam. He did that on the uh, semis. Did he just chop his arm off? Oh, because yeah. he got hit with a dart. The most dangerous element is having your director sitting on the hood of a car. Everybody, welcome back to Stuntmen React. We are back. We got Eric with us today. Woo! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Thank you for having me. And you are the true OG. You started this whole series, Eric. Well, guys, we have a ton of fun clips that we got to talk about today. I know Nico has had a vault full of clips just for Eric. Yep. So let's dive right in. Ooh, you guys have been asking for this for a very long time. We're finally doing it. We're breaking down the extraction car chase for you guys. What really stood out to me is just like what they were able to pull off with very little and probably how difficult it was to film in this country with all these moving parts. Part of the way they did accomplish that, and they digitally stitched these wipes together. So they're only locking down sections at a time of the road or the city they're in. Yeah, the blends here are really nice and seamless and it just keeps going. Like right there, you yeah. know, going into the car. The camera just went through the rear windshield. Mm -hmm. That was pretty sweet. I think that's one of the things that takes me out of it personally. I'm not taking away from it at all. I think it's fantastic. But I feel like a lot of the wipes happen where I would expect them to happen. Yeah. And I can just tell that they did a wipe there. That's a, that's a good point for us when we're watching this. Like, it's so in the foreground that it's hard to not see it. Also, what really stood out more than the stunt work is what the camera guy was doing. And I know for a fact that that was Sam Hargrave, the guy who directed it. The most dangerous element, without a doubt, is having your director sitting on the hood of a car holding. <laughs> How much does that camera like that Probably weigh? Probably like 15 pounds. Yeah, yeah. 20 I mean, pounds. It's, it's, you have him harnessed in. So every time it stops, he's like, boom. There's a couple of places where he is about to hit the car in front of him and he like lifts his legs, although they don't tap. Yeah, when that car does the reverse 180, you can see it like sweep right by his yeah, legs. Right here. Woo! <laughs> Dude. Some precision that's, driving right yep, there. Precision. But he started off as uh, Captain America. I believe it was Winter Soldier, but he was the main stunt double for Chris Evans in that movie. He then went on to stunt coordinate Avengers. So then when it came to Avengers Endgame, he was helping second unit direct. So you can just see how this guy is able to keep expanding his talent into filmmaking, not just physically, but behind the camera. And then from that, you know, he really like kind of bonded with with the Russo brothers, and they obviously love this guy. The Russo brothers were able to like pick out this talent and just not think of him as some dumb stunt guy to the point that they were like, why don't you direct this movie for us? From a producer standpoint and a general sense of things, he had zero business directing this movie. However, <laughs> the Russo brothers had spent so much time getting to know him and seeing his work firsthand that they're like, this is the guy that we should put our chips in the middle and bet on, and I think it really paid off. <laughs> So congratulations, Sam. You have ascended to Mount Olympus. <laughs> so Eric, you are the master of fire stunts. At least you've been the master of fire stunts when you come into here and talk to us. We haven't really had anybody else that does as much pyro as you. So this is a clip from an old film called The Thing From Another World. And there's some pretty gnarly fire stuff. I wanted you to take a look at it and just tell me what you think. One point line, the needle's hit the top. Terrifying. Yeah, it's a lot of fire. Damn, they keep going. Like, just keep throwing fuel on him. The thing that really stood out to me was the fact that they're throwing liquid buckets of fuel on the guy, which just seems so uncontrolled. Relatively speaking, the fire kind of goes out quickly and it doesn't really stick to him a lot. Lighting Clint on fire, we we're using like a rubber cement based fuel. So it sticks. The glue doesn't burn. It's the fumes coming off of it that burn. This, I'm gonna guess that they are throwing alcohol on him hmm. and not gasoline. That's why it kind of hits the ground, it splashes, it burns, and then it's gone. Where gasoline would probably stay a little bit more. So 
it makes me think it's alcohol, which is super dangerous, honestly, because it just burns at such a very incredibly hot rate. That's why it's like burning and gone. Same with doing gasoline. It burns very hot as well. That's old school and like kind of the way they had to do it back then. That guy, obviously, he's got a full head mask on. I bet he has three layers of Nomex on. And then also he's got like a fireproof racing suit over top of that, completely soaked in gel. He's probably freezing. And then I'm gonna go with a probably put him on oxygen. That seems risky to have yeah. an oxygen tank. <laughs> I guess the whole burning part too is risky. Yeah. <laughs> do they have to switch out his protective layers for every shot that they do here? They would. They would take him completely apart and put him back together. And the reason is, you just burn down the <laughs> set. You gotta reset that too, and you can't have them sitting around and they're freezing. You know, there's one little thing that happens on the side here that catches my eye. The guy that's holding up the mattress. So he's still there holding the mattress, bouncing around. He just gets engulfed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he just yeah. Run out of there. Now, is there really a dude back there? Or is just there like a, a rope? stick through the set? Just like yeah, doing this. But like, that's such a ridiculous detail. Why? You know, there's no <laughs> yeah. way they did that. I think there's a grip with a pole through the wall, like kind of moving it up and down just to make sure it's like he's still there. Another thing too, the second bucket right there, boom. He comes at him and he's touching fire. You know, I kind of showed you, it's like if something's on fire, you can kind of like run your your hand through it okay mm -hmm. and as long as you keep moving and then you're back out of it you like feel the heat and then it's it's okay he seemed to move on pretty quickly those guys were certainly getting hot in there do i want to give props to the cinematography here too they turn off the lights before it comes in so the fire illuminates the room hmm. and the exposure is actually really dialed in so like you can see the detail in the flames Hey guys, a lot of these clips that we see in the show are inspired from the things that you found, so I have a request for you for stunts here. Please leave a suggestion down below of the coolest stunt from a foreign film that you have seen. That way we can look for some clips here that might be unseen by a lot of our audience and shed some light on how they're made. No retreat, no surrender. You know nothing about this. I don't know anything about this. There's this guy who is training in martial arts. His dad is a karate instructor. Van Damme makes one of his first appearances in this movie as a villain. Van Damme comes to like shut down their karate school, kicks the crap out of the dude's dad, and then knocks him on his butt. So very discouraged. His father's like, it's over. And he like tears his Bruce Lee poster oh, in God. half. He takes off running down the street and ends up stumbling upon a abandoned house. And then out of nowhere, Bruce Lee's spirit comes to him <laughs> and essentially starts training this kid oh my God. to be able to beat Van Damme. Yes. It's 80s gold. Full contact karate, the world's deadliest game, is being kicked apart by the <laughs> Look at Van Damme. He did that on the uh, semis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man, this is it. Just killing like, people. You again? Wow. <laughs> Dude, everybody's moves are so like. Three whip kicks in a row, right to the face. You're good. I get better. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Well, the gloves are coming off. The yeah. shirt's coming off. Yes. <laughs> He's behind you, dude. <laughs> Do look out behind you. That didn't even hit him. Yeah, it's not yeah, that was a miss. Look at that. Papa. <laughs> dude, it's just like wrestling. Wow, Jeez. what a kick. Do you see how he kicked him too? Look at this. He kicked him like this. He went, uh, like an inside crescent kick. <laughs> and look, look at how he goes flying. He was like, oh! <laughs> Pretty solid fall though. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. Dude, look at his moves. <laughs> Just start spanking him. <laughs> it's like turned into a WWE fight. <laughs> Damn. 
good stuff. Pretty right? cool. I can be really psyched on this if I was like <laughs> 10 years old. Yeah, 10. <laughs> hey, if you like this show and you'd like to keep watching it, please consider subscribing. It actually helps us out. It helps the audience watch this video and it helps YouTube know that people enjoy it and it recommends it to more people. So yeah, consider subscribing if you're not. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Did you guys watch The Old Guard? No. No. Okay. I think a lot of these fight scenes in here, it's not like there's something egregiously bad. There's just kind of nothing that special about it. Charlize Theron is a savage from doing Atomic Blonde, you know, Mad Max. So she clearly looks good and knows what to do. Some of her counterparts, not so great. <laughs> This other girl hasn't had as much training for sure. And I mean, this camera work is doing the best it can to make them look really good. That's what you do as a director when you may have somebody that's not as strong as fighting somebody else has a lot more experience, is you do some edits to make that stuff work and make them both look good. We're done. I think the biggest thing for me with action movies now, everything feels so cliche and I'll watch a trailer for something. I'm like, I don't care. I've seen this movie a million times, yeah. you know? And that's what I felt when I saw the old guard trailer. I was just like, I don't care about this at all. You know, like yeah. I need something fresh. So I feel like the old guard is a rip off of that anime. Wait, what is this right here? This isn't, this isn't the old guard. What is this? I thought you guys being anime nerds would own this. I was literally watching anime last night and you still out nerded me, man. Yeah, Eric, I what mean, is this? So the old guard, is I think a ripoff of this anime which is fantastic it's on Netflix you should definitely check it out if you're into anime basically these are people that cannot die See, look at him chop, his, just chop arm. his arm. Off? Oh, because yeah, he got so hit with a dart and he needed to like. They're trying to put them to sleep because they can't die. They always come back from the dead no matter what happens. So he gets hit with a trank dart. He then chops his own arm off so he can keep fighting. Like I love that he puts his arm against the wall to chop it off so the blood splatters on the wall. And then as they hit him with trank darts, he knows he's going to pass out and be captured. So he puts a gun to his head and kills himself wow. so that he's dead. And then he regenerates, comes back, and keeps kicking butt. That's Whoa. essentially what happens in the old guard, except for not nearly as good. Yeah, this, this looks awesome. I love how it moves. It's sick. Oh, if only we had an animator's react episode we could talk about stuff like anime. Wait a minute, and you can find it on this channel if you go look for it. <laughs> Dude, Eric, that was awesome, man. It is always a pleasure having you on the show. I always learn a whole lot when you come on, and we always take a look at like really sick clips that you don't normally see every day. So thank you so much for coming down all the way from Atlanta. Yeah, yeah right? absolutely. Thanks for having me, Thank you. Yeah. If you guys want to see more of Eric's stuff or send him questions or whatever, you can follow him on Instagram at Eric Linden, or you can go to his website. That's correct. But Eric, thanks again for coming on, dude. I freaking love you, man. It's Heck so yeah. good to see you. Awesome. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Good to see you Thanks, too, man. Yeah.